Welcome back to the second part of my takedown bow tutorial. If you didn't realize this was part two, you best go watch the first part then. So this tutorial is for the limbs primarily, but I'll cover a few other things at the end. For the limbs, the tools that you need are a wood rasp, a wood saw, a wood chisel, a drill, and some clamps. And skis. Yes, skis. Let me explain myself. See, bow limbs will have a very nice slow taper along them. And the only way to really do this well is with the thickness up. And even then, bow timbers are known to rip on thicknesses, so a linishing thickness will be called for and they're pretty rare. Even if you do get a nice taper on your bow limbs, it's likely you want to curve on them, that is for recurve limbs. But with skis, A, they're designed to flex, B, they've already got a nice taper on them and they've got that curve on them. It's not the most ideal curve, but it's okay. All in all, skis are a really good and convenient material to make the limbs out of. While I'm on this topic, I'll cover something I said I was going to in the last tutorial. So here to the left is a typical shape for an unstrained recurve limb, and to the right is what it would look like when it's strung. Contrasting this is what our skis look like. Unstrained, it actually has a very gradual curve going the wrong way, and then kicks back at the end. And so when strung, it gives a very large brace height, which just means part of your jaw is wasted. Which is why in the last tutorial I said that the angle at which you should make the limb sit at less than 15 degrees to counteract this and bring the brace height back down. Say around to 10 degrees, although it really depends on your bow and limbs. You have to make your own judgement. So, jump on eBay and find yourself a cheap pair of second-hand skis. If you can, get a pair of cross-country skis as they have a better curve on them, but don't worry about it too much. Also, depending on the age of the skis, you may get totally wooden ones or fiberglass reinforced ones. Both will work. Fiberglass ones are probably a bit better, however the ones I'm using for this tutorial are wooden. They cost me $15. You should be able to get a similar price, although it probably depends whether you live near the snow or not. Remove the bindings from the skis, then cut the skis to length. I'm cutting mine to 600 mils. I wouldn't go any smaller than this, as they become more and more likely to snap the shorter you go. This is where the hacksaw comes in, as even though the skis are wooden, they have steel and aluminium edges on them, which may damage a wood saw. Next is to remove the plastic from the belly of the ski. This is not a necessary step, but the skis I had were so scratched and ugly that I decided that was a good idea. As you can see, I'm starting with a wood chisel and then just peeling the rest off. Take your time here, as you don't want to pull off any of the wood along with the plastic. It's likely that you'll have a steel edge running along the edge of your skis, attached by lots of little screws. Easiest way to remove this is drill the heads out and then it should just pull straight off. While skis are thickest in the middle and taper off, their width is actually smallest in the middle and gets wider before tapering off at the end. This is to make a sort of snowplow if you will. However, this is bad for our purposes as we want a nice long taper. So just trace out on some paper what you think looks right. It's not critical, so it doesn't have to be exact. A good way to do this is trace out only half, cut it out, then fold along the centre and then trace the other half out and bam, you get it perfectly symmetrical. Now just trace this onto the skis and cut off the bulk of the unwanted wood with a saw and finish up with a wood rasp. To reinforce the tips of the limbs, just glue and clamp some extra wood on the end. You must use epoxy glue here. Since there is a slight curve on the limbs, a glue that will fill gaps and still be strong is required. Once it is set, cut off the excess and rasp it smooth. Now it's time to cut notches into the tips. Do this with a small diameter file, making sure to put a radius on every edge that the bowstring will touch. Now a hole needs to be drilled in the base of the limbs in order to bolt to the riser. Just like there is a hole for the bolt 15mm from the base of the limb support in the riser, there should also be a hole 15mm from the base of the limbs, but wait, don't actually drill it at 15mm from the bottom, you should drill it at say 17mm. This is because you need to have a very snug fit, and when you drill with the extra 2mm it won't fit, so you can then remove small amounts of timber with a rasp until you get a very tight fit. If you don't get a tight fit, then the limbs will be able to pivot back and forth, and this is quite undesirable, so avoid that. At this point, as far as function goes, the limbs are finished, but there are a few more things you may want to do for cosmetics. Here are some stainless brackets I made for the bottoms of my limbs. I'm not going to go into these because in retrospect I don't think they were worth the extra effort. You can finish the limbs by sanding and oiling just like we did with the riser, but I took a different direction, as I wanted the limbs to contrast the very natural looking riser, so I put this tiger pattern on them. If you're interested in doing the same thing, I made a tutorial. Here's a link. So I'm just going to quickly squeeze bowstring and arrow rest into the end of this tutorial. So at this stage it would be a good idea to buy some bowstring, since you put so much effort into the rest of the bow, but here I am using 2.5mm thick nylon string. The reason why you should avoid this is because it does have a bit of stretch in it, but it's not too bad. So the best not to use is a bow line. Here's a quick demo. Make a loop and then 
the rabbit goes out the hole, around the tree and back into the hole. It's a simple way to remember this. You should make the string around 120mm shorter than the length from notch to notch when the bow is assembled. Another good idea is to tie some heat string into the knot to protect the string from wear in this spot. Wear can be stopped in the centre of the string by applying more heat shrink. I applied a second layer of heat shrink here that acts the same as a brass knock. As you can see it stops the arrow from sliding up. If you're going to do this as well make sure you line it up properly. You should also melt the ends of the nylon string to stop it from fraying. Also, you can simply shoot your arrows straight off the shelf on your riser, but you'll probably damage your veins in time and might lose a bit of accuracy. So you can buy these plastic arrow rests. They're very easy to apply as they're self-adhesive and quite affordable. Disclaimer, follow this tutorial at your own risk. I take no responsibility for injury or damage to property as a result from following this tutorial. Also, if you're under 18, make sure you get permission and or supervision from a parent or guardian. Thought I probably should do that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Just in case you're curious, my bow drew 33 pounds and 32 inches. Also, I'll um, chuck an update video here for any commonly asked questions or any updates that I have. Also, if you make a make this bow, I'd love to see it. So post a video response to this video and yeah, I'll froth up. Yeah, so that's about it. Here are those links again. Like, 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 like.